ಮೆರವಡಿಸಿ ಇತ್ತು This is a lecture on uh, vibration transducers. As you know, in uh, condition based maintenance, about 70% uh, of the cases of machinery health monitoring is done usually through vibration. So, in this class, we thought that we should uh, look into the merits and demerits of the available uh, vibration transducers and uh, what are the different types of vibration transducers uh, used in industrial health monitoring. And in the subsequent classes, we will be talking in details regarding how actually vibration monitoring is done. So, as you know, oh no, what is vibration? You all know vibration can be represented either as a displacement, velocity, or uh, acceleration. Well, uh, if displacement is denoted, uh, the amplitude is denoted as uh, A, you know, velocity is omega A and acceleration is omega square A. So, you see there is always a strong relationship between the amplitude of the quantities measured and the frequencies. So, in one way at high frequencies you will see because of this omega square a term the acceleration is going to have a high magnitude compared to displacement. Displacement is actually a frequency independent phenomenon okay, and it is actually a low frequency phenomenon. Okay. I always uh, am asked this question you know, what is the best parameter to measure. Okay, you will see as we go through this class, sometimes at low frequencies, it is actually the displacement. For example, if you think of a shaft, okay, which is there in a casing, this is the casing of the shaft or a housing. What could happen is this shaft while rotating, if it is not on the rotating at its center, there may be a subtle slight eccentricity okay. and because of this at any of the points you will see that displacement at one location is A 1 and another location is A 2. For the shaft to be uniformly or concentric to the center, all these A's should be equal if you measure in the four uh, quadrants or four uh, four directions okay, at 90 degrees to each other. But, if you will see A 1 is not equal to A 2 is not equal to A 3 etcetera, okay, then the uh, then what happens is uh, we know there is some problem okay, because of eccentricity. and how can this be detected. If I have some sort of a sensor here displacement sensor or some sensor which senses this gap between the rotating shaft and the casing it will tell you know, there is something wrong with the machine. So, this is where actually displacement sensors are used. Okay. If we could be slowly turning the shaft it may not be powered by a motor we could be slowly rotating uh, by some mechanical device think think of a large cement uh, plant where we have the large very long rotary kiln kiln could be of the diameter of 2 to 3 uh, meters the di diameter of the kiln. Okay. And this could be about you know about 2 to 3 meters in diameter. So, what happens in such a case if there is a slight eccentricity we are going to have uh, problems in the forces uh, unequal forces etcetera. So, this actually you know you would have seen when they go to install and commission such uh, equipment they actually put a lot of dial indicators. Okay. These are nothing but mechanical spring loaded uh, they have a plunger and stylus. So, the plunger is going to move depending on this A 1 A 2 etcetera and then we will have, have a corresponding reading and this dial indicators are very good in the sense you know if you want to measure the uh, surface roughness in a bearing to uh, out of roundness in a bearing. And the small variations here 
could be measured by a dial indicator. Okay, and this could be in the order of microns. Okay, so to measure displacements, uh, we have a mechanical device. A dial indicator looks something like this. Um, this is spring loaded. This is the plunger. So, as you will intuitively see that if the motion is very slow, almost close to static, I can use a dial indicator to move the um, see the displacements. But imagine if the uh, bearing or the rotating shaft was move, moving at a very, very high speed. Because of the inertia in the plunger, this plunger is not able to respond to quickly changing stimulus. So, the need for high frequency measurements arises and that is where our dial indicators or L V D T is another linearly variable displacement uh, transducers have a limit in the frequency range as to how much they can measure. Okay. I mean for low speeds they are good. In fact, L V D T s are good for less than 50 hertz, okay. but imagine I want to monitor the vibrations of a gas turbine. Gas turbine could be having uh, the about close to 30,000 rpm. So, 30,000 rpm will become 30,000 by 60 that is about 500 hertz okay. and that is will be the fundamental frequency. So, such a high speed measurements are not possible through mechanical devices like an L V D T or a, a dial indicator and so on. So, we have to see what are the instruments or transducers available to measure high frequency vibrations. Okay. Before I go into that, let me just give you a general overview of what are the different types of vibration transducers available for us. One is the piezoelectric accelerometers and we will be discussing in details regarding the piezoelectric accelerometers. because. 99 percent or 98 percent or 95 percent of the vibration transducers are actually piezoelectric accelerometers nowadays, because the convenience of measuring omega square a which is acceleration is very easy. And then once I have this uh, accelerations, I can divide it by omega to get velocity and divide it by omega square to get displacement. So, this covers the entire frequency range from you know 0 or uh, as close to 0 to about 5000, 10000 hertz which is not possible with the L V D T or the dial indicator we just discussed. Okay. Of course, another one is the L V D T and then one thing you would notice that be it an L V D T or a dial gauge or for that matter an accelerometer, they have to be always in contact with the surface at which we are measuring the vibration. Okay. But there are instances where we cannot touch the surface. For example, the, uh, the surface is so soft, so surface is so hot, temperature is very, very high, surface is not accessible, okay, very minute location in a very integrate, integrate, integrate uh, position, we cannot uh, use an accelerometer or an LVDT. So, that is where we have to use certain laser based techniques. Uh, be it to measure the normal vibration or the rotational vibration. Of course, there are some probes like the eddy current proximity probe, which can be used to measure the gaps or the uh, measure the it is like a non contacting type of transducer. It, it we can measure the uh, displacement or acceleration in such or velocity in such cases. The eddy current proximity probe and moving coil velocity pickup they essentially measure the velocities and then they are non contacting in nature. But one again disadvantages of the eddy current proximity probe or the moving coil velocity pickup is that they cannot uh, be measured on surfaces which are non ferritic. Surfaces has to be ferritic to measure the uh, eddy current or the, uh, to use the eddy current or the uh, moving coil velocity pickup. 
So, let us uh, come to uh, the brief principles of operation of a piezoelectric accelerometer. Essentially, what the piezoelectric accelerometer has is basically if I put these crystals, piezoelectric crystals either in this form, either I compress them or I shear them, they are going to develop a generative force and this force is uh, responsible for generating the charge Q and this charge could be converted to a voltage with a suitable, a suitable charge to voltage converter amplifier and basically I will get the voltage signal. These are known as the charge type of piezo electric accelerometer. What happens here? Uh, suppose I make this accelerometer here. this is mounted on a surface okay, wherein it is having a certain motion x. So, essentially in this piezoelectric type accelerometer all I have is set of piezoelectric crystals I mount within certain disc and they are bolted. Okay. And then I will get a charge Q which is proportional to the displacement of this seismic mass this Q is proportional to y minus x okay. and with mathematical equations you will see eventually this Q is proportional to the base motion okay motion could be in the form of acceleration so once i get this charge as you know charge cannot be stored charge has to charge will decay with time so immediately we have to have a circuit wherein this charge has to be converted to voltage okay so this is where a piezoelectric uh, charge type accelerometer would require a charge to voltage amplifier okay this amplifier is is outside the accelerometer. Okay. The advantage of thus the charge type accelerometer is and this is a sealed unit, this is a sealed unit. Advantage of such accelerometer is this can be subjected to very, very high temperatures the charge type of accelerometers, okay. but the disadvantage is that you have to carry a charge to voltage preamplifier with this accelerometer. So, with the miniaturization of electronics what has happened is people have put the amplifier inside the accelerometer. Okay in a small IC chip, okay, but then to power the accelerometer I have to give it a power source, it requires a power source. Okay. So, once such accelerometers are there, uh, then what we can do is uh, So, this is the same accelerometer, but the IC chip is inside installed inside the accelerometer and all you have to do is just take a cable and this is a voltage output because you have to the same cable could be used another conductor could be used to give the power supply to the uh, IC which is used to convert the charge to the voltage. But the disadvantage of this is because the IC chips are integral and kept inside the accelerometer housing and usually this housing is you know 
stainless steel uh, very hard and you can never uh, break it open okay. they are hermetically sealed so this uh, accelerometer cannot be subjected to high temperatures high temperatures we cannot subject them to high temperatures because this ic chips will be get damaged but for simple uh, vibration measurements in the room where the ambient temperature is you know 30 to 40 degree or around 30 35 40 degree celsius is good they are not good beyond 100 degree celsius the ic p type you know they, there are many trade names for this you know like you will have the icp types the delta tron delta tron piezotron isotron you know this tron comes from the electronics okay and delta piezo iso icp these are different trade names uh, the companies use to sell their charge amplifiers which have the IC inside it. So, all you will require is just put that accelerometer, give it a power supply and you will straight away get the voltage. So, this is very convenient from a vibration monitoring point of view, because nowadays many of the uh, signal analyzers have the built in uh, power source, which could be used to power such ICP type accelerometers and they are very convenient. But the strongest disadvantage is that they cannot be subjected to high temperatures. In fact, while doing a uh, uh, experiments on measurements on very high speed uh, gear boxes. I have lost couple of accelerometers because uh, the technician mistakenly put the ICP type accelerometers on a bearing which was very very hot and we are monitoring for about 30 40 minutes and of the day I, I get no signal and, and see that the IC chip has got far, uh, fried okay, because of the high temperatures. So, we have to be careful when using such uh, ICP type accelerometers. Okay. We will go to the details of the accelerometers later, but let me just tell you about the other uh, important uh, accelerometers or vibration transducers. And this is how uh, actually in the inside of the accelerometer, this is how it looks like. And this is the mass which is loading it, and uh, this is the piezoelectric crystal, okay. And this is a tightening bolt which goes, and this whole unit is sealed. This is a ceramic unit as there is a steel unit and this is seal and because of the relative displacement here and the piezoelectric mass we will get a charge which is proportional to this displacement or uh, acceleration and then we will see a voltage and this voltage could be uh, measured as uh, the other. So, the charge sensitivity could be usually pico coulombs per meter per second square okay, or in the ICP type it will be the voltage sensitivity millivolts usually meter per second square. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I will move on to the and this is how the typical piezoelectric accelerometers look like if you will see this is the size of a 50 paisa coin and uh, this is where you connect the cable to connect the charge uh, to measure the charge which has been generated and similarly this is the top connector this is a side connector okay and this is what is known as a triaxial accelerometer triaxial accelerometer because of the fact that you know acceleration is highly directional. <coughs> so, at any one point you would see in, in a machine that we have to measure in the x direction, in the y direction, in the z direction. So, rather than putting three uniaxial transducers in one location, the <coughs> three piezoelectric crystals are put at one location and then we can see you know this means I am measuring in the x direction this is uh, perpendicular to x in the y direction and this z is out of the plane of the projection and so then I get the 90 degree uh, three directions uh, which are 90, 90 degree uh, perpendicular to each other or mutually perpendicular. And if you see this hole, this is just a hole to mount the accelerometer at the location just by tightening a screw or you could have uh, you could put studs like this on the accelerometer and then <coughs> tap a hole on the surface where you are measuring the acceleration and then we can 
measure the uh, acceleration. Another very very important <coughs> note you have to make while using this charge accelerometers is is the cable. Cable plays a very very important role because you know this conductor which is there and there is a signal wire on the ground wire and if there is a relative motion between them they are going to generate a charge. Okay. Suppose the cable is violently moving having motion and now this cable is laying on a surface which is having excessive vibration. Well, then you have your accelerometer here. Is having this accelerometer here, and then there is excessive uh, vibrations. Okay. Now, because of this this uh, cable is going to uh, have lot of motion and because this motion there will be charge generated which is not actually your charge due to the acceleration, but charge due to stray noise. So, a lot of stray noise will occur if I do not take good care of the cables. So, these cables are very very special cables okay, and they reduce what is known as the tribo electric noise and a good uh, way to do that to reduce triboelectric noise is to ensure that the cables do not whip around or slash around or ok. So, what you have to do is if you put this accelerometer here usually you tie the cable some sort of a tape. So, that the cable does not move ok, because if this is a charge type of accelerometer Okay, the lot of charges are going to get generated if the cables are going to move and they are going to interfere with the measurement uh, charges. And the best idea is to best way is to have this amplifier the charge to voltage converter or amplifier very close to the accelerometer. Okay. And usually this cables are not very very long you know, about 1 meter to you know, 3 meter maximum, because beyond that it the cable noise will be so much that you will uh, contaminate your vibration signal. So, this is another uh, precaution you have to take while using the charge type accelerometers for uh, measurements uh, vibration measurements. But this kind of issues are not there when you take uh, when you have the ICP type of accelerometers, wherein we straight away get a voltage signal uh, in the cable rather than charge. Here we have the charge, okay, and charge will uh, decay and charge you are generating. So you have to have the charge to voltage uh, amplifier. Uh, in fact, as soon as the charge is generated, you have to convert it and then transmit over long distances, because sometimes if you have to measure at a one particular location and record at may be 100 meters away. Okay. You cannot have a 100 meter triboelectric uh, cable which is uh, slashing or uh, moving around and then generating a lot of noise. So, your uh, version measurement will be no good and that is where you have to be careful of. And you can get a feel of uh, how large or how small these accelerometers are. Obviously, to increase the sensitivity of the accelerometers, we have to have more piezoelectric crystals. So, more piezoelectric crystal means heavier it will be. So, heavier accelerometers will have high sensitivity. Usually, typically this kind of accelerometers which you see in the palm of somebody's hand, it is about 10 picocoulomb meter per second square. 
and if you have the right type of voltage converter, this could be about 10 millivolts per meter per second square. Okay. There are accelerometers wherein we have to measure very, very low levels of acceleration. For example, a floor vibration wherein you have put in a tunneling electron microscope or a scanning electron microscope. The vibrations level could be about 10 to the power minus 6 g, micro g's, you know, micro gravity levels. For such measurements, we have to have maybe transducers having 1000 millivolts or 1 volts per meter per second square. So, this calls for very, very massive amounts of piezoelectric crystals. So, whenever you have high sensitivity requirements, the transducer will be big and heavy, but you have to pay a price for the transducer being big and heavy. The frequency, frequency response will be low. So, we obviously cannot measure very, very high frequencies with high sensitivity accelerometers. You know, this could be the frequency of such heavy accelerometers could be up till maybe 10,000 hertz. Suppose, I want to measure very, very high frequency vibrations. high frequency vibrations. To measure high frequency vibrations, my frequency response of the accelerometer has to be very, very high maybe about 7200 kilohertz. So, they have to be very, very light weight. So, the sensitivities are very low maybe 1 millivolts per meter per second square. Okay. We want to measure accelerations, very, very high accelerations, for example, during a shock generation, something fell on the ground. So, in the, such a case, and <coughs> shocks are usually very, very high frequencies. So, we have to use light accelerometers. So, if you go to the catalog of any manufacturer, you will see different types of accelerometers made available to you. Whether, uh, so, if I was to just specify the generic specifications of an accelerometer. By accelerometer, I mean uh, piezoelectric accelerometers, and that is what we are going to discuss. One, of course, it is sensi sensitivity, whether it and of course, and before that could be the type of accelerometer. By type, I mean whether it is charge or ICP type, where the electronics are inside. By sensitivity, it could be whether it is in picocoulomb per meter per second square, if it is the charge type or millivolts per meter per second square. Next important is the frequency response. By frequency response, I mean that every transducer is also a mechanical system. So, this is also going to have its natural frequency. Okay. Maybe, so measurements up to this range uh, about you know, 0 0.7 times, if this is its natural frequency. 0.7 times f n. So, this is the useful range, wherein or this is the useful range. Wherein you will measure the. So, this accelerometer is good only up to 0.7 of f n. Okay. Then of course, the other maximum temperature it can be subjected to. It can withstand. This is very, very important because when you talk about industrial health monitoring, there will be gear boxes and bearings which are uh, subjected to very, very high temperature maybe 300, 400 degrees Celsius. Okay maybe the you should know from the manufacturer whether the accelerometer can be sent or subjected to such a high level of temperature the directional sensitivity
whether the acceleration accelerometer is sensitive to which direction. So, we have to mount the transducer in that direction to which it is highly sensitive. It could be uniaxial or triaxial. And then of course, you know subjected to which it should not get affected by nuclear radiation. by EMI, by moisture, okay. does it require external power supply or not. It is uh, mounting methods, okay. And so, if you and of course, the very important is the mass of the accelerometer. Because as you know, vibration is a very, very uh, important dynamic property of a system, and the dynamics of the system is going to change if the mass of the accelerometer is larger than the mass of the system which you know, whose vibration you are measuring it is going to influence it. Imagine uh, we have a very very thin disc okay, which is rotating or which is having a motion some sort of transverse motion okay, and this disc may be weighs you know 100 gram. Okay. I obviously cannot put an accelerometer on this which is weighing 500 grams okay, because the entire dynamics of the system is going to change. So, one rule of thumb which we have to always keep in mind that mass of the accelerometer has to be less than one tenth of the mass of the system on which you are placing the accelerometer. Okay. Otherwise, this is what is known as the mass loading effect will occur and then you are not going to get the true reading of the acceleration. Okay. Now, uh, before I continue uh, more on the uh, accelerometers, I just want to mention you about a couple of two important uh, probes which you also use. And this is essentially an eddy current uh, proximity probe, which is a non-contacting non probe. Basically, what happens? We have a probe here, onto which we generate, uh, we apply a high frequency signal very very high frequency signal about few megahertz okay and that is there in the uh, primary of this there's a coil here and primary and because of this high frequency waves which are close to the shaft which is a uh, iron shaft eddy currents are going to generate get generated and this eddy current will be generated in this gap and so the secondary voltage which is sensed by this proximity probe will be proportional or will be a function of this eddy current and this eddy current is a function of the gap. So, we can measure such eccentricities or gaps which are created between the shaft and its uh, journal of the casing because of an radial run out eccentricity by putting such eddy current probe. Okay they are non contacting type <coughs> of course they have a very very low frequency response compared to the accelerometers but the advantage is i obviously cannot put an accelerometer here because accelerometer is only going to measure the vibration of the casing here i can no way measure the vibration of this shaft because i cannot put the accelerometer in contact with the soft surface so the relative displacement can be easily measured by such eddy current proximity probe in fact, many of the steam turbines etcetera, 
they come up with this uh, pre installed with two or three eddy current probes. And if this is your x and this is your y, if you plot them x and y, and if they are identical and of the same frequencies, you will get a perfect square. Okay. So, uh, sorry, perfect circle, and these are good for what is known as orbit analysis. Okay. And if there is just looking at a phasor diagram of the x and y on a two plane system, you will see if it is a perfect circle, you know this system is x, uh, concentric to the casing and it is rotating uh, perfectly. And with time, this may change like this. Okay, this may change like this, and then you know that something is wrong with the eccentricity of the shaft, and this is a very good way to report it or record it or observe such eccentricity by uh, having an eddy current proximity probe. So, usually in steam turbines, large uh, compressors. Axial. We can put such eddy current proximity probe <coughs> to measure the relative motion between the shaft and the casing. Another uh, non contacting type transducer is the velocity pickup. Essentially, there is a permanent magnet and a moving coil and uh, because of the motion of this system here, I am going to get an EMF okay. and this motion is because of this is contact this is in touch with the surface okay the velocity type pickup and this will get a will get a velocity proportional to this uh, emf which has been generated but a uh, modification to this is if i have something moving here and this this coil is not there and this is ferritic we can have a key phasor kind of signal it will give a signal like this so this is uh, these are also used to measure rotational speed because uh, with vibration health monitoring you know measuring the rotational speed is also very very important okay oh, i cannot obviously put a tachometer always to a rotating shaft to an end of a rotating shaft but if i have an arrangement like this wherein i have a shaft on which there is a keyway or a key and then if I put such a pickup. So, at every time the key wave comes below the pickup this voltage this gap is going to change. So, there will be an voltage generated with time. So, just measuring the time period I will know the frequency of rotation as the inverse of the time period. Just by having a frequency counter I can measure the rotational speed. And in the in, in in the industry, all such rotational speed measurements is done through an inductive pickup. Okay, and all you and then you can transmit the signal over many many meters or kilometers for that matter. Okay, and uh, on real real time always you will have this uh, RPM trace. Okay. Now. Earlier days, you know, uh, when uh, the piezoelectric accelerometers were not developed, people were using such moving coil kind of velocity pickups, okay, and eddy current pickups. But nowadays, with the piezoelectric accelerometers available, we have only two important parameters which you need to measure. One is acceleration. Another is the rotational speed. So, 
So, these are the two most important vibration though rotational speed is strictly not vibration, but I am vibration transducers which we have to use for machinery health monitoring. Okay. I will uh, now focus on some applications as to how this accelerometer is used and mounted on systems and so on. So, now that we know about the three, three types of transducers, you see this is the eddy current probe, velocity transducer and piezoelectric accelerometer. If you see their frequency range and the relative amplitude which they can measure, the eddy current probe can measure low frequency and the limit is about 2 kilohertz and the range is not much. Velocity transducer has a low frequency limit of about you know, 10 hertz to about you know, 1000 hertz, but the piezoelectric accelerometers can measure all the way from 0 to very very high you know 70, 80 kilohertz and the, uh, the range is also very very high, the dynamic range is very high. So, that is what I am telling to measure the acceleration, we now will be only talking about piezoelectric accelerometer. Before the piezoelectric sensing elements were used, people used to also use strain gauges instead of the piezoelectric crystals to measure the seismic accelerations. And this is how a typical uh, chart of an accelerometer will look like. This is the frequency response okay, and uh, this is the resonant frequencies and then uh, what are the methods to mount the accelerometer and what are the voltage and charge sensitivity as a function of temperature etcetera. And this is typically which you will find in any of the accelerometers which we purchase. And the question is we have to use this vibration uh, measurements and uh, the question always you would be asking well I have got a certain value is that good is that bad I do not know. So, there is a standard ISO 2372 standard and recently it has been updated and that is a newer standard I will tell you in the next class that tells the machines power as to the maximum permissible Level, level of vibration in a frequency range of 10 to 1000 hertz okay. and this is usually in millimeters per second. Okay. So, if you know a 100 horsepower machine you know it should not be more than 3 millimeters per second and so on. So, that gives you a feel like when you are doing vibration measurements on machineries for their health monitoring you know the power of the machine. So, the maximum acceleration or maximum RMS level in this 10 to 1000 hertz band should be not beyond a certain level which is given in that standard. And uh, this is how uh, typically this is uh, essentially a charge to voltage amplifier and this is the accelerometer here and uh, this is the special cable I was mentioning about which reduces the triboelectric noise and sometimes you will see the cables are costlier than the accelerometer itself because otherwise you know if these cables are uh, beating around if they if they move also they are manufactured in such a way that there is so much of reinforcing mechanism in the cable itself the actually the copper conductor which is there inside hardly has any motion it is actually there are multiple sheets of protection in this uh, cable there will be a layer of um, plastic insulation uh, steel reinforcement and uh, on top of the copper uh, uh, wire and then there will be a plastic coating, sili sometimes silicon coating so that it can be used underwater, etcetera. So, these cables are very, very expensive. You know, when you are talking about underwater accelerometers or hydrophones, this uh, we have accelerometers, underwater accelerometers wherein you can measure the vibration of underwater structures, but the cables there are very, very costly, they, they will not allow water to creep into the or seep into the 
a conductor and contaminate the readings etc. Okay. And usually uh, when we have this, this is an accelerometer, an uniaxial accelerometer of the top connector and this is actually a gold plated connector here to make sure that there is no corrosion etc. And this is that cable here and which goes to a vibration meter wherein you can select the knob to see the readings of either acceleration, velocity or displacement. Okay. Now, uh, the next question you would be asking yourself is uh, how do we actually physically fix this accelerometer onto the surface on which we are measuring the vibration. Okay. Surface could be uh, as soft as uh, the flapping wings of a bee okay. or uh, as delicate as a you know, buzzing uh, bee, bee, bee wings or as uh, robust and heavy and hot as a gearbox casing. Okay. Everywhere there is vibration, how do, how do you measure that? Okay. Obviously, on a uh, gearbox casing i can mount my accelerometer many ways one is i could uh, attach if this is a usually the gearbox etcetera these are cast iron. So, I can very easily tap and put a stud and screw the accelerometer onto the stud. So, one is the stud other is I can attach a soft magnet to it. Okay. But again, again out of my experience I am telling you this magnets, the soft magnets are very soft. This magnets cannot be subjected to high temperatures, which time suddenly you will see that the magnet has cracked. Okay. So, usually these magnets cannot withstand high temperatures. So, usually permanently if you have to mount, you make a hole and put a stud, a stud and then you sometimes tap the uh, accelerometer onto it. Sometimes the surfaces are so hard or some machine the OEM would not allow you to do any tapping which would permanently damage the structure or weaken the structure. How do you do that? In such a case what you do is uh, onto the surface you glue a block. which could be glued permanently by a uh, cement like the cyano acrylate like like you know we talk about those fairly quick type of uh, glues which are available in the market etc you can use them to glue the block onto the surface whose vibration you are going to measure people will not ask you to uh, let let you do a drill a hole and do a tapping that is not allowed. So, usually you will use such an uh, device a block on to this block you can screw your accelerometer with a tap. Okay. And this <coughs> actually uh, the stud mounting is the best and then comes the glues and magnetic base if it is soft and they have pretty high frequency limits. But sometimes even just you know a layer of beeswax on a surface the honey beehive beeswax you can just put it here and then stick stick the accelerometer onto it ok. Just press it and this is the bees wax they are very strong ok. But the problem is you cannot use them beyond 40 degrees. In room temperature these are good, but beyond that they will melt and they cannot be. Another type is that if you are quickly surveying a surface, you can put a 
handhold probe okay and then move around accelerometer okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you some of the mounting methods through pictures this is how the accelerometer if you buy it looks like in a kit okay this is the accelerometer and this is that special cable i was talking about this is the magnet this is the bees wax and there are a lot of studs washers etc and this is a tap given to make the tap okay and this is a typical kit which you'll see of an accelerometer and then accelerometers always need to be calibrated so this is the handheld calibrator wherein you can give a known levels of 10 meters per second square at 1000 radians per second and then you will see the acceleration uh, values whatever voltage it comes it gives you will know that it gives 10 meters per second square of acceleration and this is typically we are measuring uh, using a magnet here the vibration in a test track and this is where another test track wherein we have put an uni axial accelerometer and that special cable okay and this is an industrial type of accelerometers which can be subjected to very very high temperature this cable is special and then we have an uh, meter vibration meter which will actually see the you can see the spectrum okay these are all there in our lab you can uh, go to this website and see this uh, system as well and this is one of the reluctance type velocity pickup which we have used on the shaft okay uh, we can also use an optical encoder to measure the rotational speed and we can use a uh, single point lasers also as an accelerator uh, to measure the vibration because this is a refrigerator compressor wherein we are measuring you can see this spot here where we have put a laser beam and once we put a known laser beam because of the reflected wave there will be a doppler shift and the doppler shift will be proportional to the velocity of the surface and we can measure the for surfaces where when we cannot approach for example here in another case we have a, a transformer which, which is there in our lab you can see these points which are shining actually these are the points we have put reflector tapes wherein we can measure the uh, velocity which is uh, with which this fins are vibrating uh, and then we can sh shoot the same laser uh, uh, vibrometer to measure the vibrations of the surface because here we are measuring the sound intensity here another uh, application of this laser based uh, vibration uh, measurement system is using a rotational laser vibrometer okay wherein we shoot two beams if you can see there are two dots if you have two laser uh, beams separated by a particular distance if you know v1 and v2 if you know delta r you can find out omega and that is what we are using this uh, laser uh, vibrometer to measure the uh, rotational vibrations another view of the a rotational vibrometer and this comes with a signal conditioning system wherein we will straight away get an uh, omega uh, as a function of uh, frequency okay uh, this is another view okay of the same uh, rotational laser vibrometer this is the uh, laser head which shoots in uh, shoots two beams okay okay thank you